Today on Tokant, I'm talking about dual time versus GMT versus true GMT watches. And I know it's been done before, but even in 2022, I still see some pretty obvious misconceptions between those three. I've seen statements from watch brands or videos from other YouTubers or articles in the press still confusing them. For example, saying that a true GMT must have a rotatable bezel, not, or saying that a dual time must have a 12 hour subdial, not. So I'll go over what they are and what makes them what they are and maybe what they're good for. And then instead of talking about the most famous of them all, the Rolex GMT Master 2, I'll illustrate my points with some uh, more interesting and somewhat unusual German versions. Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Ben. So dual time, GMT and true GMT watches. Essentially they provide the same function, uh, which is to give you the time in two or three different time zones, but they are not created equal. So let's start with the dual time watch. So what's important with the dual time is that it works on a 12 hour scale, which means the hour hand will go around the dial twice in a day or once every 12 hours. And that's very important to describe a, a, a dual time watch. It will give you the time in two different time zones, but not three. And then the rest varies. It may or may not have a fourth hand. You have the main, you know, hour hand, the minute hand, the second hand, and you may or may not have a fourth hand for the second time. Uh, it may or may not have a subdial, and it may or may not have a bezel, and it may or may not be a rotating bezel. Okay, so all these are actually optional. Uh, but because it works on a 12 hour time scale, usually it will have an AM PM indicator. So how do they work? Actually, a dual time can be achieved with very minimal added movement functionality. And I thought about this when I was doing my video about Leica uh, last week, you can go and watch it here. And Leica L2 is branded by Leica as a GMT watch. And I was thinking, this is not actually a GMT watch. This is a dual time watch. And I was quite disappointed because Leica is a German brand and I would expect German to be more precise about what it is. So this is a dual time watch because actually um, it is achieved just by adding an inner rotating bezel or you can call it an inner rotating uh, chapter ring on a 12 hour uh, scale, that's it. Uh, it does not have a fourth hand, it does not have a second hour hand, it's just using the main hour hand uh, to tell the time both uh, in your local time and in the home time uh, by rotating the inner chapter ring. And this can be achieved uh, on the movement side just by adding a mechanical rotating bezel and then an AM PM indicator that is linked to that chapter ring. And that's it, boom, you have a, a dual time watch. So it's very clean, uh, it's very um, easy solution, but it's not very complicated in terms of, of movement, uh, which is why actually if I were going for the Leica, I'll probably go for the Leica L1 instead of the L2. Um, Vacheron Constantin overseas, for example, is using a fourth hand, so a second, uh, you know, hour hand that goes around the dial uh, in 12 hour scale and it has an AM PM indicator. It does not have a bezel, it does not have a, a 12 hour chapter ring, uh, but you can tell still that uh, there is a second uh, hour, so you have a dual time. So what are they good for and when should you go for a dual time watch? In my opinion, because there is no jump hour hand, I think it's more convenient for a casual traveler or someone who goes to his or her destination for a long period of time to then set the second time zone as the home time and then the local time zone in the country of destination and for which you may have to reset uh, you know, the hour and the hand and the date. Also, usually uh, dual time watches tend to be dressier because a lot of them will have a 12 hour subdial. So my ultimate uh, favorite example of a dual time watch will be the Glasutu original Senator Cosmopolite. This one will show you uh, the local time with an AM PM indicator and also a subdial, 12 hour subdial for the home time with its own AM PM indicator, as well as a 35 different time zone uh, that follow the IATA code. So GMT has 24 time zones, but actually in the world there are 37 different time zones and two of which are not actually used, they are for political reasons, but no one lives there. So there are 35 of them. And this watch will show you all of them with standard time and daylight saving time. That's the coolest of them all. Now let's look at the GMT or what people call a desk GMT or caller GMT. So the main difference with the dual time is that the GMT will have a fourth hand or a second you know, hour hand, and it will rely on a 24 hour scale meaning that the fourth hand will go around the dial once per day every 24 hours. Now it's called the desk GMT or color GMT because it's the home time or the fourth hand that will be a jump hour hand, but not the local time, okay? So I stay where I am and I wanna track the time in a different country or in another place and I can jump the home time uh, or the second time hour hand. 
Now it will have some, some sort of 24 hour uh, you know chapter ring on the dial but it may be uh, you know fixed or it may be a bezel a fixed bezel or it may be a rotating bezel but that is actually optional. Now if it does have a rotating bezel you could tell time in the third time zone by offsetting it from the fourth hand. So how does it work in terms of movement functionality? Well actually it's not much more complicated than the dual time watch and it's quite a simple movement construction. You just need to have the movement drive the fourth hand or the home time on a 24 hour scale whereas the local time is driven on a 12 hour scale but that's it and since those two are actually uh, independent of each other you can still have a quick set date. So when you pull the crown you can turn the crown one way to set your home time or the second time that you're following and then you can turn the crown the other way to set the date. And that's pretty much it. So uh, these movements tend to be cheaper and probably the most famous of those uh, is the ETA 2893-2 uh, or its equivalent the Celita uh, 330. And these are still very good movements. So when should you go for a GMT slash desk GMT slash color GMT? Uh, well, two reasons, I think. First, if you're looking for a GMT uh, in a sub 3000 US dollar range, I think you'll have many more options if you're willing to consider a color GMT uh, with a 2893 or a Celita 330 in it. The second reason is, funnily enough, if you're not traveling. Uh, if you stay in your current location and you want to track the time in another time zone, in a, in a second country or something, because uh, it's the home time or the fourth hand or you know the second hour hand that is a jump hour hand but not your local time. So it is much easier that way to uh, quickly change the time uh, for your home time or your second time zone. So you know they always give the example of uh, you know having a conference call in New York or something and then you can quickly change the home time and then set it back later. Uh, in my case for example uh, if I'm in here in my current location in Hong Kong and my partner is a flight attendant so if I want to track the time in New York or in Sydney I could quickly uh, change the time with the fourth hour uh, and then set it back later. So a very good German very popular and somewhat unusual example of this would be the Zin 856 and if you want the external rotating bezel then the 857. Those are two of the more popular Zin models which it correctly calls a UTC and not a GMT. So we're not going to go into the differences between GMT and UTC but in a nutshell the GMT is a time zone whereas the UTC is a time standard which does not take uh, the daylight saving time into consideration. But since 1963 it should be called a UTC and not a GMT. GMT is more for cultural reasons. So uh, this one comes with the Celita uh, 330 or the ETA 2993-2 depending on the model uh, and it will be made of a you know, German steel, uh, the dial is filled with nitrogen, you have the dehumidifying capsule, you have anti-magnetism, you know, have all the good uh, you know, Zin technology. But also on the dial it's the way that it's displayed. Uh, the 24 hour scale will be placed you know, on the inner part of the dial and it makes it look somewhat like a Thigh B Flieger dial and that goes very well with Zin you know, pilot routes. So this is a, a very popular and affordable uh, choice for a color GMT. And finally we have the True GMT or Flyer GMT or Traveler GMT. So what's the difference between a True GMT and a color GMT? I mean they pretty much look and act the same way but the difference is that the true GMT will have a jump hour for the local time and not a jump hour for the home time or the fourth hand like in the caller GMT. Everything else will look very similar and they may have uh, you know, a fixed uh, chapter ring on a 24 hour scale or they may have a fixed bezel or they may have a rotating bezel also optional and if they do you can also tell the time in the third time zone by offsetting it uh, to the fourth hand. So the difference is in the movement and how it's constructed. Basically in a true GMT the local time and the, and the fourth hand or the second time zone are linked. So if you pull the crown all the way out and you want to set the home time it will also drive the local time. And because of that, because they are not independent, usually you will not have a quick set date. So now I know at least of one exception to that and it was the Glasuto original Sport Evolution GMT back in I think 2008 that was a true GMT but that also had a pusher at 2 o'clock for a quick set date. Now what do you use them for? Well uh, this one will be a lot more uh, convenient if you're an actually frequent traveler because it has a local time as a jump hour then when you uh, arrive in your destination you can quickly change your, your local uh, hour uh, without affecting your fourth hour. So it is the way the movement in the Rolex GMT Master 2 for example or the Tudor Black Bay GMT 
or the Omega Planet Ocean GMT uh, are constructed. It is a more expensive way to construct a GMT, but this is also uh, easier to use if you're actually traveling. Now, what is a German version of a true GMT that I find uh, you know, quite unusual and interesting? To me, it would be the Nomos uh, Zurich Weltzeit or the GMT uh, for the non-German speaker. And you can see uh, in this one, the home time will be displayed at three o'clock with a 24 hour scale uh, time, uh, which makes it a true GMT. And then the local time will be uh, displayed with a disc of 24 different cities. Now it is not a world timer because you cannot tell the time in all the different cities at once. You can only tell it in one city at once, but with a pusher at two o'clock, you will jump the local time uh, to show you the time in a corresponding city. And I think this is very um, you know, easy to read and clean and very very Germanic approach to a true GMT. So in conclusion, which one do you prefer? A dual time, a color GMT or traveler GMT? To me, uh, because of the movement complexity, I have to say I would love to have a Rolex GMT Master 2 or maybe more realistically when Tudor will inevitably come out with a Black Bay 58 GMT. But to be honest, you know, for practical reason, I think a color GMT is more useful to me because I usually stay here in Hong Kong and I just need to track the time in a second time zone. So let me know which one makes you tick. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As usual, you know, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.